Welcome everybody, welcome back. It's me, Andrew Tomek, your technology teacher, back with our weekly live stream, the Chromeworks Club. Welcome everybody. So uh, we've got a really great lineup for this week. Uh, let me tell you all about what we have on stream here. We're going to be uh, releasing our newest game at 11 o'clock. It's an ar exciting new arcade game and I'll tell you about it in a second. Um, we're also going to go visit Alta Vista Public School where um, they did cat and mouse this week and I have um, some highlights to show you from there. And Kaylin, our co-op student, uh, who is very musically talented, is going to show us a new website called Incredibox. It's not actually new, but it's a really cool music-making website where you can make your own boy band. And um, Yaya is back with another game review, this time with a really cool brand new platformer on Scratch. And lastly, I'm back with another segment of Mr. Tomek's Marvelous Machine. We're going to be adding a new gizmo to our machine. And this one's going to be a really cheesy security camera where you can barely see because there's so much static. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So that'll be coming up at the end of the day. Let's see who's here on Discord this morning. So, um... Oh, I see lots of people aboard here. So I'm actually trying something new out today. I've had so much audio routing trouble that I'm actually going to take all the sound from Discord and bring it out through my speaker. So um, you guys, um, now you should be able to actually see the entire live stream exactly the way that you guys on YouTube are seeing it now, all my friends on Discord. So um, that's a new innovation I'm trying out today. We have Gamer Davey with us today. Davey, you want to say hi? Uh, apparently not. And my new best friend, Ken. Oh, sorry, Davey? You want to say hi, buddy? Apparently not. Okay, you missed your chance, buddy. Okay, my new best friend, Kendra, is on. Kendra, who was... Oh. Uh, Kendra, who was on my uh, on my live stream yesterday, asking all kinds of great questions. Do you want to say hi to the audience, Kendra? Uh, Hello? I'm not hearing you. I'm not. I, I can hear you very, very distantly in the in the distance. But there's something going on with your audio. Hi. Can you get, oh, yeah. Now I hear you fine, Kendra. Great. It was because my mic was. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So this is working perfectly. Kendra, you were so fantastic on the live stream yesterday. You had so many great scratch questions. So I'm really happy to have you back here again today. Um, did you have fun yesterday? Good, good. All right, excellent. Well, um, well, enjoy the show and and uh, speak up if you have any questions. Who else do we have here? Kian the Awesome is on here today. Say hi, Kian. Hi, Kian. Nice to see you. Uh, how's things going there? <laughs> All right. Maybe. Not really going that smoothly. Okay, let's give Thane a try. Good morning, Thane. Good morning, Mr. G. There you go. That's how you talk to on a live stream, buddy. Tell me about your life. Uh, did you enjoy the live stream yesterday? Yeah, yeah it, was it was fun. fun. Uh, no, one really, no one really came, came over. over. Yeah, we were hoping for a better audience on this live stream. It was mostly yeah. just the Discord folks. And um, I think I want to try doing it again sometime. But I, I need a better audience for sure. So... Let's see if we can uh, get some extra kids onto um, these live streams in the future. I, it's not going to be my last mm -hmm. one, though, for sure. Uh, what's the weather like down there in Florida? It's minus 15 or something here. I'd say it's, it's about, about normal, normal, like about 70. Oh, I hate you. Okay. All right. Do. <laughs> okay. Thanks anyway. All right. Let's let Deck on for a second. Deck in London, England. How are you doing? I'm fine. fine. Uh, what's the weather like there? Yeah, it's really sunny. Really sunny and kind of yeah. warmish, or or is it above freezing? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I think everyone has better weather than Ottawa. Did you guys know that Ottawa is actually the second coldest uh, world capital in the world? Uh, the coldest world capital is Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. 
And so we're colder than Moscow, which everyone thinks of as the coldest capital city in the world. So it's a really unhappy place to be at this time of year, I have to say. All right, there's a good, uh, thank you, Ottawa Tourism. I'll be waiting for my award. Okay, guys, so uh, lots to get on to today. Let's um, get started. First, I wanted to show you my brand new game release for the week. So let's get over to that. So this is a brand new Scratch version of my favorite arcade game from when I was growing up. It's called Joust, and it's a really fun um, arcade game where you're playing a knight fighting against other knights. But instead of running around on the ground, you're riding a flying ostrich. Let me show you how it works. So you hit W to start. Whoops. And you flap your wings. It's a little bit like Flappy Bird. You flap your wings with your... Um, with your space key and then fly around like this. If your lance is above your enemy's lance, whoa, there's still a few glitches and we're looking at those right now. So part one where we do the movement is all good, but, well, let me kill one of these guys. Um, but uh, some of the enemy movement is still a bit glitchy. So you see, you have to grab those eggs when they hit the ground. Otherwise, they spawn back into bad guys again. There we go. And so you can see that if you wait a second, they turn into bad guys, and then they just respawn again. So you have to kind of double kill them to, uh, to get them killed. What do you guys on Discord think? Fun-looking game? Yeah, definitely. This actually w would be pretty hard to make, and I like these really hard games. Yeah, this is a super hard game. So those of you who are interested in um, trying to make this game, you should understand that this is probably the most advanced game that we've made so far. The Just getting the player movement down took me an hour and a half. So that's how long today's video is today. It's a 90 minute video just to get player movement going. And what's frustrating about it is you can't see anything happening. It's only in the last five minutes of the tutorial that you can actually see the characters moving around. So um, a little bit of a frustrating project for you guys, but uh, so for more kind of the intermediate to advanced users, if you're interested in that anyway. So um, that's gonna be released at 11 o'clock today. I'm really excited to show that to you guys. Um, so, what else was I going to talk to you about? Um, cat and mouse. So, again, we've had more classrooms all over uh, watching my new cat and mouse introductory videos, right? We're, we're teaching kids how to... Let me get back to this screen again. This isn't an appropriate place to talk about that. Yeah, so we're... Um, we're introducing kids all over the world to Scratch using this introductory... Um, coding program that I came up with. It's a new set of videos and it's available on my, on my website, chromeworks.ca. And classrooms all over are trying it. Today I was talking, uh, or li earlier this week, I was talking to Tammy McIntyre, who's a teacher at Alta Vista Public School. And she was really, really feeling unsure about coding. She'd never done it before. She had no idea what it was gonna be like. And she said that, she admitted herself that she was just really, really unsure of herself with computers. So she wasn't sure whether this would work for herself, but she tried these videos and she was amazed at how well it worked. The students were able to help each other out, even when she didn't quite understand what was going on in the coding. The students were clever enough to help each other out. It was a grade six, seven class, or actually two of them. And uh, they did fantastic work. So I wanted to give you guys a little look at some of the cat and mouse remixes that this class did, because I think they just did a fantastic job. So um, without further ado, here's Miss McIntyre's class's work. So here's an Among Us remix by Y.E. Fantastic. So it's cat and mouse done with Among Us characters. This is a fantastic remix, I have to say. This is really cool. And here's a fun baseball one. You see how um, how Alice gave our character a little bit of a baseball uniform? That's really cool. A baseball's flying around. And here's Benson's project, kind of an outdoor uh, project. And what I like about this is you see those little falling things. They take your lives away. So every once in a while, a random, I'm not sure if that's an apple or a pokeball or whatever, but something's falling off the screen. And this really cute one by Elizabeth, it's a totally pink motif. 
and it's very, uh, it's actually just really nice to look at. And you can see the game over screen, it's really funny too. Um, and here's another one by Marcus, and I just really like the background in this. It's kind of um, a cozy kitchen area or living room, I'm not sure. It might be a, a witch's lair eh, with the bubbling pot. Anyway, and here's an outer space oriented one that's got kind of a dragon popping randomly around the screen. That's really cool too. And let's see what's up next. I love the sound effects in this one. This is Nico's project. It's a cat eating roosters. And here's a fox and bunny one by GG. Nice color scheme again, though it's a little hard to see the rabbits. And here's Noor's project. And this one's Tom and Jerry themed. The color schemes are just like Tom and Jerry, the old fashioned cartoon. I thought that was a really clever idea. And this one has some great music. HC's project here. Really, really nice looking, I have to say. Uh, just really cool colors. And this one made me laugh. It's a flying hippo chasing cheesy poofs by Dylan. Nice little project. There we go. All right, so that was just fantastic. Let me um, go back to here again. So congratulations. Now, I'm not done with Ms. McIntyre's class because they did some, some other really amazing stuff. I wanted to showcase for you uh, one particular project that I was so impressed by. The student didn't want to give her name, but um, it's listed here in Scratch as Lazanga MH. And uh, I was talking to her earlier in the week and uh, she said she was fine with us showing her project. So she's done cat and mouse and let me show it to you right now. She's done cat and mouse with a really cool Mario theme, beautiful graphics. And um, in my uh, cat and mouse video, I, I, when I'm doing the end part, I tell, I basically say, you guys are, do, don't know enough about Scratch to do a final boss yet. And um, so she came, she wrote me back and said, ha, ah, you thought we couldn't do a final boss? I'm doing a final boss in this game. So here's this beautiful little game. It's all Mario themed. Gamer Davey, you're gonna love this one really nice little remix and if we play long enough you'll see that a boss will come out at the end which is really cool so i just thought this was a fantastic use of existing graphics and doing stuff along a theme last summer davy who's a big nintendo fan was doing all his games up like this with nintendo themes and um, there's some awesome graphics available on the internet so it's always a fun thing to do okay here we go here comes the boss now watch this the boss is throwing out these bombs and you have to avoid them for 20 seconds in order to win the game so really challenging at the end here what i've got to stay away from these guys so this is a really oh and you see i touched the uh, i touched the thing so i lost Anyway, I was only six seconds away from victory, and that's really unfortunate. So uh, congratulations, Lazonga. <laughs> um, and that, I, th I thought that was a really impressive little project. Um, the kids at Alta Vista did some other projects. So as well as doing cat and mouse, they saved some stuff into their shared studio that they had built themselves. Uh, one student in particular had did a couple of games that were really cool that I wanted to show you. Um, this is not it though. So this is um, this is an awesome little drawing program by Mankey Meatballs. Let me show you this one. So it's just a simple little project. You can pick a color just by clicking on it here, and um, you just oh I have to hold it. Um, press space to start drawing. All oh, right. So when you so you point your mouse at where you want to draw to, then hit the space key, and the drawing tool basically follows you around the screen like that. You can increase the pen size by clicking on plus or minus. You can decrease it. You, you can add backgrounds to it. Let's try changing the color now. Anyway, and if you hold the space key down, it'll basically just keep drawing lines every time that you go to a new point. Really nice little program. I was impressed by that. So congratulations on that one. Here's another one by Fonzie Donzie. So this is a really, really simple project, but I was impressed that the student here um, was actually able to make this up just after cat and mouse. So this is somebody who hasn't done any scratch before, I don't think, and made a fun little jumping program. 
whoop, like that, I just died. Let me try that again and see if I, I can actually make it over the egg. So a little jumping game similar to the dinosaur game in uh, Google Chrome that you guys all know well and good when you can't get on the internet. Oh, I'm doing it now. I've mastered it. I am speed running the game. Okay, no, no, not really. Okay. And finally, uh, Julian was the student I really wanted to highlight here. He'd done some really cool stuff. So this is a uh, remake of Jet Run, which is a pretty popular game. You guys have probably seen it before. Um, and so it's, uh, it's a little primitive, but it's actually kind of fun anyway. And whoa. And that, that sh shot me back into here. I wish there was some sound effects in here, but otherwise it's a really cool project. These things are supposed to fall down on top of you and kill you like that, or if you uh, hit a spike like this backwards, it says you lose, try again. I like the handmade graphics. They actually uh, make it really fun. And another thing, he's got um, mobile controls here too, which I don't see too often in Scratch games. So if you're playing it on a touch screen, you can still play as well. Anyway, and he's got a reset button here, which is really cool as well. So nice job on that. Uh, he was getting a lot of love for that online from his classmates. And I thought Julian had one more project here, but I don't see it right now. I Let me see if I can go back here. No, all right, I've lost it forever. Anyway, so uh, congratulations to all the kids at Alta Vista School. I think you guys uh, did some great learning this week, and uh, I love to see your projects, so keep them coming. If anyone out there in TV land has a remix of Cat and Mouse that they want to show me, just go to my website, chromeworks.ca slash remix, and you'll find instructions there on how to remix your game and send it to me because I really want to play more of these Cat and Mouse remixes on my live stream. So, uh, so go to the website. If you've made this game, if you've made something you're proud of, then I absolutely will show it online. Okay, guys, let's uh, get to our first feature of the day, and that's going to be Kaylin, our co-op student, has done a fantastic little video. Um, so Kaylin, you'll remember, is our music star here. He's a music producer. And a high uh, as well as a high school student. And he, um, this week, was looking at a, another music-making website, and he's done a little review for us that is quite impressive. I really like this app, and um, I'd, I'd love for you guys to try it. It's called Incredibox. Has anyone on Discord tried Incredibox before? I'm hearing no. No, 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 apparently not. Anyway, so you guys are going to love this. Check out this uh, little feature here. I think you're going to be impressed. Today you're going to learn how to make your own boy band on this online software and learn how to make your own songs that sound just like this. Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, this week I'm going to be showing you this website called Incredibox. So you're going to go to Incredibox.com. Uh, and you're going to go try web version. So once that's loaded, you're going to see all of these uh, little pictures here. And what these are, are they're all the versions of, of the game. So there's a bunch of different um, sort of sections you can play with. So I'll show you, to start off, I'll just show you the, this first one called Alpha. So this was the first one they ever made, and then they sometimes they periodically add new ones. So that's why there's so many there. So you're gonna load it up, and you're gonna see just a bunch of it's just a blank, a bunch of people there that with nothing, no no music playing or anything like that. They're just standing there. So what you want to do is down here, uh, these are a bunch of just uh, sort of characters that you can drag in. So let's I'll show you the first one. And now he starts playing music and he starts beatboxing. So uh, all of these are their own character and they each play a different sound. They each make a different noise. And what's, uh, what's cool about it is they've made it so that no matter what, if you drag in anyone, they'll all work together somehow. So yeah, they're each their own sound and you can just continue to drag in more and more until you're happy with it. So he 
he's out of that. Uh, if you want to mute one, you can go like that, and it'll just play these two. If you want to solo it, you go like this. So if you want it to only play one of them, click that button. Uh, unsolo, click it again. If you want to take one of them out, click, in, click the X there. Uh, I'll drag that back in just because I want it there. Uh, so yeah, you can keep on adding more. Try a different one. So yeah, that's kind of cool. So you can see these are all randomly chosen. I did not like I don't have this memorized or anything. I just drag these all in randomly, and it they sound all they all sound good together. So yeah. Solo this one. You can do whatever you want. Play around with them. You can mute a couple of them. It's really glitchy for me. If you want to like make it sound sort of cool, you can mute them for a bit and then bring them back in when you're ready. Go ahead and take all these out. So yeah, that's that's just version one. Um, if you go okay, so if you if you want to go get new sounds, these are all part of version one. All of these buttons you see down here. Our version one. So you can click these three lines up here and go home and go to versions. You can switch to, let's go version three. Okay, so here's version three. I'm going to click play. Um, so now I'm going to show you a song that I've made. Like, well, I'll, I'm going to remake it, but one that I made before and I know I really like the sound of. So I'm going to start with the drums. You're going to drag in this guy here first. And then bring in this one. And then this guy. Okay, so next I'm gonna bring in this one. And these are starting to get into like the the melodic parts instead of the drums. So the he's like singing. And then another melody type thing. He's whistling like that. I really like that one. Uh, and then I'm going to bring in this guy who sings. I'll be singing. And then for the last thing that just brings it all together is the bass. It'll come in in a second. really brings the whole thing together, makes it really full, I really like how this sounds, so yeah, you can try and replicate this if you want, try and remake this yourself, uh, just follow along with what I did, um, uh, also, if you want to take some of them out, uh, you can pull down instead of pressing X if that's easier for you. What I like to do is to sort of start to mute some of them.
I think this is name. Yeah, your DJ name. Uh, you don't need that, I don't think, but you can put it if you want. I'm just going to leave it. And then, so to export or to save it to my mix, it needs to be, you need to have the downloaded version. But we can click share and then you can copy the link for it or you can put it on any of these places if you want. You can email it to someone. I'm just going to copy the link. Let's see. All right. So I'll go ahead and show you the two other versions just real quick. So here's another little tune that I made in version two. The fourth version. This is uh, just an example of what you can make in the last one. Just brought, made this up quickly. So, yeah, I just think this is a really cool website that you can try out. Uh, there is a downloaded version that you can get for $5 on the iOS App Store. I enjoy the demo so much that I don't think it you need anything else, honestly. Like, I think this is really cool, and it's enough to have a lot of fun with, and I really enjoy making it. So, uh, try it out for yourselves, and uh, I hope you have fun with it. Okay, guys, that was a really nice review, uh, Kaylin. I'm, I was actually really having a lot of fun with that uh, bit of software, so I'd, en I'd encourage you guys to try it. It's so user-friendly, and no matter what you do, you make fantastic music with it. So very, very impressive stuff. Um, all right. Uh, what, what do you guys on Discord think? Did you guys like that? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tomlinger is playing it right now. Okay, cool, eh? So um, I'd encourage you guys to play it some more. Um, it, it's actually a really fun little music making website and one of the few music websites where you don't have to know anything about music to make something beautiful. So that's what I really liked about it, guys. Um, okay, so I have a video game review that I'd love to uh, play for you guys. So uh, this is our co-op student, Yaya. Sorry, there's a coffee grinder going in the distance here. Um, Anyway, so let's uh, get, uh, so we've got a new platform that Yaya has done this week. So let me show that to you right now. Hello everybody, my name is Yaya Noir and welcome to another Scratch Game Review. Today we will be reviewing another very recent but successful Scratch game that was released just two days ago. World, a multiplayer scrolling platformer. This is a single player pixelated game. The title includes multiplayer in it, but this game is in fact single player, so ignore that for now. The main objective of this game is to use blocks and boosts to make your way up to the top as fast as possible. When you get hit by the spikes, you will have two hearts remaining, but please do not worry because depending on how well you play, hearts will spawn throughout your adventure to victory. The controls are only the space key and the WASD keys. It's as simple as that. Despite being released just 48 hours ago, this game has gained a burst of popularity throughout its short span on Scratch. This game is a little tricky and competitive, but you will eventually get the hang of it. The part where I struggled the most was the fact that if you land on the lava, it will quickly drain your hearts away and you can easily lose all progress and die if you do not jump immediately. Right now, my high score is 1 minute and 7 seconds to beat the game, and I'm challenging all you kids to try and beat it. Thank you once again for tuning in on another game review, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Yaya, for that little game review. So that's a fun little platformer. I will put the, um, 
the address of that game into the uh, into the summary for this YouTube file. So if you're looking to play that game, it's a very odd name for a game, especially because um, it's not really multiplayer. And yeah, yeah, mentioned that. Um, another cool feature that I've seen in this, and I haven't quite figured out how we did it, is it, you might have seen during gameplay that the game was prompting you to like and favorite the game. And if you did, it granted you bonuses. So somehow the software is detecting on the website whether you liked and favorited it. I have no idea how that happened or how that worked. So I'm going to look into that and maybe I'll teach you guys how to do it. It's a fantastic way to get views on your on your own game projects, of course, if you can figure out a way to do this. So I'm going to uh, look at it or maybe get Jeffrey on the project at some point. And I would like to figure out how to steal that aspect from this game. I'm pretty sure that, um, that the maker of this game uh, took it from someone else as well. Okay, so it's time for our Mr. Tomek's Marvelous Machine segment. Uh, let's jump over to that. Oh, my transition didn't work. That's so sad. Um, I'm not quite sure what that's about. So it's supposed to be like worrying machines and stuff like that there. We'll, we'll, we'll run that some other time. Okay, so Mr. Tomek's Marvelous Machine is a segment that I run every once in a while where we start adding doodads and gizmonobs onto a really cool scratch machine. It's really all about learning how to make interfaces and buttons and things like that that work in scratch that you can use in your other projects. So all the little bits and pieces of this machine um, each one of them is something you can grab and bring into another Scratch project and learn how to do stuff like sliders and knobs and buttons and readouts and stuff. So today you'll see that I've added a new feature to the to the game and it's um, it's this little TV monitor. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, right now code it to turn it into a little security monitor with static and stuff on it. Let's have a look inside the project and I'll show you guys what's going on in there. So um, there's, a, there's actually five different sprites necessary to pull this off. So let me show you what we got here. So I have a cat here, and the cat is just there for um, so, so we can have something running around in the background so we can look at something on our screen. You can put whatever you want on your monitor if you're uh, going to be running this thing. Um, we've got a, the, the actual screen itself has four different components to it. Let's get to my costumes here so I can show you that. So there's an edge around the screen that's going to get brought to the very front just to make it look more like a real monitor. Then we've got the screen portion and that just looks like a shiny TV screen. That's what you're going to be seeing when the monitor is turned off. And then we've got this static here and I've actually done two different costumes. So I created some static in Photoshop just using a, um, a uh, what was it called? An add noise filter. Basically I made some monochromatic noise in here. And you can get static from Wii Video as well or from a whole bunch of other places. So it's um, not hard to find an animated GIF of, st of static if you want to import that into here. And then lastly, there's this white background. Now normally that wouldn't be needed in a project, but because I have this checkerboard pattern behind my machine, we're going to have to have some white there just to block it so that our computer monitor doesn't have a checkerboard pattern on it as well. Well, it's, not, it's more of a grid than a checkerboard, I guess. Eh? All right, so we're going to code this thing up and um, let's see a little bit about how it works. So the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, pick a location for all of these objects and we're going to send everything over to the same location. So let's start with, because they're all centered. So once we get them sent there, they should all align properly so that even if we move stuff out of the way it'll all go back again so let's start with the screen edge here and we're going to tell it to go to its starting position so i'm going to go hey if uh if you guys want to sh watch along with me as well and uh and maybe build this project i'm going to save it into the chat here on youtube and also on discord so anyone who wants to build along with me is welcome to do that sorry i should have set that up earlier let's magnify our screen here all right, so we just want to get a starting position. I've already figured out the proper starting position. Remember that you can just move stuff around the screen to wherever you want, and Scratch will remember that and put it into the go to coordinates. So the coordinates I want for this are actually going to be 140x and 110y. Now I want that in all uh, of the elements of this TV screen. So I'm just going to run around and just drag that over to the other sprites. 
so that one of them exists in every one of the monitor sprites. So now when I click the green flag, my TV will reassemble itself. It's in the wrong order though. The white is at the front. Whatever you touch last usually comes to the front in Scratch. But that's not a problem because we're going to use some coding commands to get everything set up again. So we're still on our screen edge here. And let's tell it just to go to the front layer because we definitely want that uh, in front of everything else. Click the green flag. Now that's in the front. The white um, border here, that's going to the back. So let's send that. To, we'll say go to back. And we won't need to do anything else with that. Whoops, that didn't work. All right, there we go. And now we can see the static on the screen. Um, the static, we're gonna make, we're gonna animate it right now. So let's go over to the static and we're gonna go green flag. We're gonna go to position there and we're gonna get a little forever loop here that just gets it to shift through the different costumes. So let's go to our control here, forever and um, we're going to go next costume. So let's go to our looks here. Next costume. Now that's going to go a little bit too quickly. So we're going to add a delay just 0 0.1 seconds or 0 0.2 seconds.
off completely. And we're gonna set that variable. Oh, and we also have to, so we have to set the variable in both places. So at the top here, we're gonna set TV on to on. And down here, we're gonna set TV on to off. So when it's off, we're turning it on, and when it's on, we're turning it off. Okay, good. All right, so that should allow our thing to uh, click. I'm just gonna add one more set of blocks before I test this though, because we wanna get that sound effect going. So I'm gonna go when I receive. So let's tell it when it receives that sound. When I receive static, then we're gonna play forever. So let's go forever and we'll play sound until done here. If you're repeating sound effects inside a loop, remember you'll always have to do it until done, or it'll just keep restarting itself every half second, which is really ugly. Okay, let's click on it and see what whether it's all working properly. So there we go, turn it on. And there's our static we can't see very much underneath it. I thought the cat, oh, I think I've hidden the cat underneath it. Let's just have a look here. Yeah, the cat is hidden, so let's show him. And we're gonna animate him in a second to get him kind of moving around the screen. But for now, I just want you to see that it's transparent. And it's not animating. What's going on here? It seems to have glitched on me. Click the green flag. There we go. And now you can start to see what I'm talking about here. A really, really bad screen, right? It's looking lovely. And when we click it, the sound keeps going, so the sound needs to stop itself at some point. And I'm trying to remember where I did that in the code. Um, and there should be a stop. Oh, here it is, right at the bottom of when this sprite clicked. So let's go back to our screen. And uh, we're setting, turning our TV off. And here's where we're gonna basically tell this loop to stop running. We can do that with a control command here. So let's grab a uh, stop all. This will kill your whole program, but you can modify it and look, its shape will change. We're gonna change it to stop other scripts in this sprite. So that will kill this loop, but keep this part of the program running. Not that we need to, because it'll restart every time we click on it anyway. So let's go other scripts in this sprite, and that will make the static sound turn off as soon as we're good to go. So let's try that again. Green flag, there we go. And when we click it again, it goes off, on, off, beautiful. Okay, so all we have to do now for our last step is just to animate this cat. So there's all, you can have anything going on in the background. You can have an armed robbery or an explosion or something fun like that if you want. I just uh, wanted to basically give you guys a little proof of concept here just to show you how it works. So I'm just gonna animate him really quickly to walk randomly around the screen. And those of you who are new Scratch users might need some help figuring out how to do that. So I'll walk you through it. So the first thing we want is we need him to be in the back layer. So no matter what happens, we're gonna tell him to go to the back layer. There we go. Um, now, the, at the very back is the screen edge. So we need to send him forward one layer from there as well. And that'll get him in front of that white part of the screen. Okay, let's go forever here. And so we want two things happening at once here when we get started, right? We want him to be moving across the screen, but we also want him changing his animation. You guys have probably seen that that's sometimes a little bit tricky with Scratch because if you have um, the two parts in the same stream, he might walk a little bit and then freeze and change his animation, then walk and then freeze and change his animation. And so you want both things happening simultaneously in two different streams of the program. So in this case, we're gonna do that with a broadcast. We're just gonna tell another part of the same um, code, cat code here to do something different. So I'm gonna broadcast a message. So let's go to events and we'll broadcast a message here that's called walk. Now that's especially needed right now because we're gonna be using glide commands to walk us around the screen this time. And glide commands basically get your computer stuck in a loop where it's not accepting any other input. You can't do collisions and stuff like that when you're in a glide, of course. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to have him glide along the edge of the screen, but I don't want him going past the screen or that'll ruin the illusion that he's behind the screen. So I'm going to show you guys how I figured that out. Let's make the cat visible and we'll bring him to the front of the screen here. So let's go, go to front. So this is just a temporary thing. We're not putting into our code, as you can see. Now I'm just going to, um, so it, we're going to tell him to glide for uh, one second to a location. Now we don't want a specific location here. We're going to put random coordinates in here. So let's go put, go to our operators. We're going to grab a pick random for the X coordinate and a pick random for the Y coordinate. So now let's look at our motion blocks or actually we can even look here for what our X coordinates are. So we're going to keep an eye on these X coordinates here and we're going to enter the number uh, that's appropriate for him. So let's grab our cat and we'll drag him over to the left side of the screen as far as we can go without him going over the edge. So this looks like it's far enough and that is an X of 75. So let's tell our X to start at 75 and we'll drag it over to the right hand side here and we don't want to go any further than this. So that's an X of 208. And we're going to tell him to pick a random up and down. So let's drag him to the bottom of the screen. That looks pretty good. And that is a Y of 71. And then let's drag him to the top of the screen. Not over the edge though. That looks close enough. And that is a Y of 141. Uh oh, I just hit the help button, I think. Let's see if we can get back to my machine. There we go. I don't need help. Thank you anyway, though, Chrome. Okay, so I was going to enter the number, the Y coordinate 141 here. 141. There we go. Okay, so now we've got him walking around randomly. And what's going to happen is we want him to stop walking. What we're going to do is have him take a few steps, like he's kind of randomly walking around and then waiting for a couple of seconds and then starting again. So to do that, we're going to kill that uh, our, our costume changing script as well. So we haven't actually added the costume changing script. Let's jump over to that for a second. So when I receive this message, uh, we have to broadcast a message though. So the message is going to be called walk. Oh, we already have a walk message here, eh? All right. Oh yeah, we're broadcasting walk right here. So we're getting this script going and that's just going to change our costume. So we're just going to walk. We're going to change our costume just 10 times here. So repeat 10 times and then we're going to go next costume inside there and we'll just add a bit of a delay to it. So let's go next costume and we'll add a delay of 0.2 seconds. You can play with that time if you like, 10 seconds, that means that he'll just keep walking, right? He'll just go right back into the loop again and start walking, or he might stand there for up to three seconds. All right, so let's have a look at this, and I think we're basically done this. So we'll click our green flag, and now we're ready to go. Now our cat is actually walking around already. He's just invisible. He's right behind, um, he's right behind the screen, but as soon as we click on the screen here, there you can see. So we could make this script run a little more uh, in a more complex uh, manner by having him flip around to the left and right as he's moving. That's the one thing you can add to it. And uh, there's a bunch of other stuff you could do as well. So you see he had a double movement there. 
Again, he had a double movement. And so he's just kind of looking like he's randomly going. So there's all kinds of stuff. I would challenge you guys to put, to remix this file and have something funny happening on the screen, right? There's all kinds of opportunities for comedy here. So when you peek in and turn the TV on, what kind of crazy stuff is going to be happening? Another way you could remix this game is by adding a change channel button. And every time you change the channel, uh, it would give you something different on the screen as well. So there's some really good opportunities for you guys to remix it if you're interested. I would love to see some of you guys on Discord do a little remix of this game, uh, of, the, uh, of this particular part of the machine, and uh, show me what you got. All right, so I think we're pretty much done for the day. Anyone on Discord have anything to say before we take off here? Did you enjoy that? Or is anyone going to make this project? No, doesn't look like it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you guys at home, hopefully you're uh, watching on YouTube. Hopefully uh, one of you is going to remake this project for me. Uh, I will put the link to Marvelous Machine inside the description for this file. So if you just uh, go to that link, remix the file, and share it with me. You can email it to me, and I'll share my email address with you here. It's info at chromeworks.ca so please just um, if you do any kind of remix is there anything else that you want me to see you've seen that I'm I like to show student work on my show here so if you send me something odds are I'll want to run it on my live stream so um, that's um, something I do encourage you all to do so I had a lot of fun teaching you today thanks to our co-op students um, we're gonna have one more week with them and then they are leaving us so uh, we're preparing some stuff for next week's show and we're really excited about that um, so that will be your last chance to hang out with my current crop of co-op students and I am recruiting for more co-op students so if you were in high school anywhere in the world and you are doing a co-op program and you would like to spend a few months working with Chromeworks and learning how to make content and learning how to do other amazing technology stuff then please um, drop me an email um, and even my uh, school students on Discord are welcome to make content for me as well. Thane is um, in the beginning process of doing a little tutorial for me. So um, really, if you are interested in becoming a content creator yourself, um, tr why don't you work with me and see if we can work together to uh, help you make a little project. I'm really excited to help anyone out who wants to be create content for my show. So, it was a fantastic session. I'm glad you all came, and I will see you again next week with part two of Joust. Bye now. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. I, I didn't, didn't really, really do, do the problem. problem. I, I'd rather do it all by myself oh. than I'll just catch up with the working file. It's all good, Thane. Yeah, I'd rather do it. Bye, Kendra. We'll see you next time.